assault. What about, though, the one subject you've written so much about, the, the population explosion, you know, the, the fact that right now the population of the, of, the, of the globe is over 4 billion. You've said that if it... It's over 5 billion. Over 5 billion, yes. You've said if it continues at its 2% growth rate a year, it'll be what in another... Well, time? actually, it's down to 1.6%, but with a higher population, it's the same amount in actual numbers, 80 million a year. So that, uh, oh, by, by the year 2000, it's going to be... It's going to be perhaps 6.5 6 billion. That's just 12 years from now. Yes, yes, it's going up very fast. How many people do you think the Earth is able to sustain? I don't think it's able to sustain the 5 billion in the long run. So that, uh, I mean, right now, most of the world, most of the world's living under appalling conditions. And we can't possibly improve the conditions of everyone. We can't raise the entire world to the average standard of living in the United States because I don't think we have the, the resources and the ability to, to, to distribute well enough for that. We have condemned, right now as it is, most of the world to a miserable starvation level of existence. And it'll just get worse as the population continues to go up. But you can't just say to a woman, don't have children. Well, you know, it's not so much that. It's so many people are saying have children. There is such a pro-natalist attitude in the world. Uh, we celebrate Mother's Day so enthusiastically. We, we say, may all your troubles be little ones. We, we celebrate additional children. Uh, uh, I feel sometimes that if we'd only stop pushing for children, that somehow there would be fewer of them. Why did you say that the price of survival is the equality of women? Because if women have full ability to enter into all facets of the human condition, if they can enter business, if they can enter uh, religion, science, government, on an equal basis with men, they will be so busy that they won't feel as, it, as necessary to have a great many children. As long as you have women under conditions where they don't feel any sense of value, no self-worth, except as mothers, except as baby factories, they'll have a lot of children because that's the only way they can prove they're worth something. In general, if you look through the world, the lower the status of women, the higher the birth rate. And the higher the birth rate, the lower the status of women. So that if you could somehow raise the status of women, I am certain the birth rate will fall drastically through the choice of the women themselves. What do you see happening to the idea of dignity, to, human, to the human species, if this population growth continues at its present rate? It's going to destroy it all. I use, the, I use the, what I call my bathroom metaphor. If two people live in an apartment and there are two bathrooms, then both have what I might call freedom of the bathroom. Go to the bathroom anytime you want to and stay as long as you want to for whatever you need. And this, to my way, is, is ideal. And everyone believes in the freedom of the bathroom. It should be right there in the Constitution. But if you have 20 people in an apartment and two bathrooms, no matter how much every person believes in freedom of the bathroom, there is no such thing. You have to set up you have to set up times for each person. You have to bang at the door, aren't you through yet? And so on. And in the same way, democracy cannot survive overpopulation. Human dignity cannot survive it. C convenience and decency cannot survive it. As you put more and more people onto the world, the value of life not only declines, but it disappears. It doesn't matter if someone dies. Of course, so many people say, well, the United States is bringing its population under, under control, that our, we're going to have a stable population. We're not even reproducing ourselves, and what the rest of the world does, we can't control. The population in the United States is still going up. The only time it went up really slowly was during the Great Depression, when there were no laws sort of lowering the birth rate. There was just an economic depression, which made people think twice before they had children. Uh, but. The United States is doing something else, which is absolutely refusing to help other nations control population. So that our feeling is somehow that it's enough for us to somehow make sure that the United States is in good shape and what other nations do is their business. It's not their business, it's our business too.
In other words, we can't exist uh, as a stable economy and a stable society if around us is turmoil, chaos? Absolutely not. Right now, in many nations, they're, they're just destroying the rainforests because they need the, the firewood, they need the space for farms. Why should I care about that? Because without the rainforests, we're going to have deserts instead. The food supply will dwindle. As a matter of fact, there's even the possibility that we're going to lose all kinds of valuable substances we know nothing about. Those rainforests have an incredible number of species that, of plants and animals that we know very little about. Some of them may, be, may produce uh, <clears throat> chemicals of great importance pharmacologically and medically. Uh, some of the plants might, if properly cultivated, be new, life, new food sources. And in addition to that, nothing produces the oxygen of the atmosphere with the same intensity that a forest does. Anything that substitutes for it will be producing less oxygen. We're going to be destroying our atmosphere, too. You're how old now? 68. You've lived through a lot of this century. Have you ever seen human beings think with the perspective you're calling on them to think now? Well, it's perhaps not important that every human being thinks so. Uh, how about the leaders thinking so? How about the opinion makers thinking so? Ordinary people might follow them if we didn't have leaders who were thinking in exactly the opposite way. If we didn't have people who were shouting hatred and suspicion of foreigners. If we didn't have people who were shouting that it's more important, it's more important to be unfriendly than to be friendly. If we didn't have people shouting somehow that the people inside the country who don't look exactly the way the rest of us look, if something's wrong with them. Again, again, it's almost not necessary for us to do good. It's only necessary for us to stop doing evil, for goodness sakes. From the Great Hall at Cooper Union in New York City, this has been a conversation with Isaac Asimov. I'm Bill Morgan. Foundation.